Okay, guys, so we're about to get started. Welcome, Alex, Craig, Ken, Martin, Michael, Juan, Alex, Neil, Wayne. Welcome, guys. Um, today, um, the agenda is basically, um, we're gonna cover some new features uh, that were just launched in beta. And uh, then we're gonna go over a little bit about the process. Uh, we're gonna cover tips. And then, of course, I'm gonna leave some space for Q&A. Um, while I'm go going over the content, I wanna make it as interactive as possible. So you can see Q&A box. So feel free to ask questions, um, add suggestions, uh, even ask for features, um, we can discuss and cover that as well. Um, and so let's make this as interactive as possible. Alrighty, so the first thing um, that we're gonna talk about is basically, you know, how to set up the account and I'm gonna cover the new feature, uh, which you'll see, it's just awesome. It's gonna help you write a better copy. It's gonna help you avoid spam and basically um, deliver better emails, which is what we all want here. Alrighty, so this is a dashboard, which I'm sure you're quite familiar with, especially if you're with us, um, you're familiar with AutoClose dashboard where you can see all your stats, all your campaigns um, and the progress. So, but the boring stuff, as we like to say, is in the settings where you just wanna set up the whole engine. So the most important thing is that you connect your email uh, because as you know, AutoClose uh, sends emails on your behalf. As you can see um, in my email, the other day I did a campaign for, for my partners because um, I'm more on the marketing side. So I did launch a campaign uh, for my partners where I you know, announced that we launched our product hunt ebook. So very quick and short email, a good case practice. Uh, do not send long emails. Ain't nobody got time for that, okay? Um, going back to account settings. So you wanna connect your email. You can always change your password. Time zone, very important one. Um, it will automatically match your time zone, but you can always change and update it here in your settings. Um, also, what you can see here um, is our auto close template analyzer. That's a new thing. So you wanna keep it enabled as it is by default by our system. So this little feature will highlight the spam words while you're typing in your um, campaign so it will highlight, highlight the spam words, which will likely cause your email not to get delivered, which we don't wanna you know, um, have as a situation. So you wanna update those words. It's pretty much like the Grammarly extension, if you're familiar with that. Um, it's an extension that helps you write a better copy in general on all the different mediums. So something similar to that coming in future, but for now is just gonna highlight your spam words. That's one part of the new feature. Okay, and you can enable it here in account settings. Um, email settings, very easy. It's important to have an email signature, but you'll see I'll talk about it later. Um, sometimes we just wanna avoid long and you know, um, flashy um, email signatures because you know, it, can, it, can, um, uh, it can basically jeopardize our deliverability on one end. On the other end, you know, people, again, don't have time for that. They don't wanna have too many links, et cetera. Um, sending speed, very important one. Um, we always put a lot of emphasis on that. Um, you don't want to send, I mean, per account, you can send 500 to 2000 emails per day as per Google, um, something similar with Microsoft. But we don't want to do that because you're sending highly personalized emails um, in bulk and we probably want to be around 100, 150 if you have a ramped up account. That means if you're sending your campaigns regularly from your um, account. Uh, if not, if you're sending like five to 10 to 20 emails, you probably wanna keep your send speed, sending speed around 50. Um, so you don't get banned or flagged by Google as, as, a, as a spam. Because you have to understand what we're trying to do here. We're fighting it with bots and, and all the emails that you send are very personalized or one-to-one -one, and you just don't wanna get flagged uh, by sending too many emails, okay? Better have more accounts. Um, in this case, you can see that we have a BCC connection with a CRM, so we use Pipedrive CRM, very good for small, medium-sized businesses, uh, definitely recommended. So we have this BCC connection and we're working towards a native integration. That means that you'll have uh, way more possibilities to integrate between um, AutoClose and Pipedrive. We also integrate with HubSpot, Salesforce, et cetera. 
Um, sending from email, as you know, in your email uh, um, service provider, basically uh, you have the option to, to have multiple emails connected to one account. Same thing, he same thing here, you can add your email. Um, these other things are pretty much technical. We don't, uh, we're not gonna go into that today. Do not email domains, pretty handy feature. Um, Microsoft is one of our clients. Um, obviously, uh, if you want to prospect uh, to, to multiple departments, you won't, you won't want to add uh, an extension here. But if you add, like I did, so every email that's like, I don't know, jack at microsoft.com, alex at microsoft.com um, will be excluded from all, all your campaigns. Ken has a question. Can you integrate this into Salesforce Marketing Cloud and use that email tool? Very good question, Ken. We are currently talking to Salesforce representatives and we are looking into different options because we did have an integration with Salesforce and they changed a bunch of code. Um, and currently that's not possible, but we can and we will be able to um, integrate with Salesforce in the near future. So that's something that we're working on basically daily we're in communication with Salesforce. Okay, um, I hope that answers your question. Um, do not email domains. I mentioned that contact fields, a very good new feature that we that we introduced a few weeks ago. Basically, uh, because you're sending personalized emails, you want to add um, you want to add as many personalization points as possible. So you want to have a custom field or a new field for even entire sentences. So once you map this, once you add a new field. Um, it will basically allow you, it will give you a token that you can embed in your campaign, which I'll get into in a few moments. Um, and then when you upload a CSV file, you can basically map those tokens and send like highly, highly personalized emails, not just the first name, the title, company, whatnot, the entire sentences, if you wish. Okay. That's about it for the boring stuff. Um, I want to start a campaign as soon as possible and show you how it looks like. So I did work on something before this call, before this webinar, um, and uh, I'll use that as a, as a good example. So start a campaign on your left-hand side, big button, start a campaign. The most important thing that closers love is, is a campaign, um, which helps them to prospect against thousands and thousands of lead, leads in the month. Okay. so. Campaign name, I will say here, um, sales leaders, New York, because that's actual campaign that I'm gonna send tomorrow. Um, I wanna do 7 a.m. to um, let's say 11 a.m. You know, because that's basically when people are most productive and most people open their emails in the morning, you know, to check what's going on. So I want to hit that sweet spot between seven and 11. Um, here on the right side, you can see the sending days uh, from Monday to Sunday. Um, and it's important that you don't include, um, um, actually that you don't exclude Saturday and Sunday uh, because those two days are quite important if you're reaching to C-level executives um, you probably want to leave those checked. Um, and then we have another option, but again, test, okay? Test everything, do not trust me because what works for me might not work for you. So make sure to test that. Okay, if we go over a drip campaign, if I would click to um, set this campaign as a drip campaign, that would mean that um, every email that I send, uh, even if my prospects reply back, uh, they'll get a second, third, fourth, fifth email, et cetera. So the default state is if you get a reply, uh, your um, uh, prospects get removed from a campaign, which is an ideal case scenario. And statistics tracking, we, we uh, add a little bit of a code in, in the back of your email so we can track opens, clicks, and replies. Sometimes if, if this doesn't matter really to you that much, like if you don't wanna have statistics, um, in that case, uh, you could just uncheck this and increase the, the likelihood of, of emails being delivered um, as well. So uh, Michael is asking, can I cl clarify drip again? Yeah, so we have two, um, two statuses basically of a campaign. One is the default state. And the default state says, 
if you send, you know, you send an initial email, then a follow up, then a second follow up, then a third follow up, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and if your prospect replies back to one of those follow ups, they'll get removed and they, and, and, and thus, you know, we won't send the second or the third or the fourth follow up to them. But if you click drip, that's almost like a marketing campaign, like a marketing newsletter. So no matter if you reply, if you don't reply, you know, they, you know, they keep on getting um, the emails that you send. Does it make sense, Michael? Perfect. Awesome. Cool. Um, sales leaders in New York, I'm going to click next step. So in the second step here, I'm going to choose recipients. And we have four options here for you, four main options, which is a big differentiator compared to um, other companies out there. So you can combine uh, your existing contacts, which is a light CRM. So this is not a CRM, but it's a light CRM. It's, that's how I basically call it, but we call it auto close contacts. So here you have all the contacts that you prospect against um, um, in, in basically your history. And here you can also see some points um, that uh, we assign to people if they engage with your, um, with your email. So let's say that I wanna add Pat to this email. Add to a campaign, yes, add to a list. Boom, so we have Pat here. I can upload a CSV file, which is um, an Excel sheet prepared for a campaign. So I could do that. I could add a new contact. So I could add my personal email. Boom, there I am. Um, and then we come to a bread and butter, which is our data unlimited. Before I click there, we have another question from um, Michael. Oh no, that's that's been answered, okay. so. Data Unlimited is also a big differentiator and um, this is how you use it if you have access to it. Um, I'll click on Data Unlimited and it's almost how I like to say a sales navigator from inside AutoClose. If I click Advanced uh, Filter, I uh, will get a bunch of new fields open up, opening up here. Um, and what Data Unlimited is, it's a, it's a base of, uh, it's a database of uh, contacts, B2B contacts from United States. So you won't be seeing Gmails, Outlooks, and you know, private personal emails. All the extensions are actually websites of companies and uh, all, how I like to say, B2B emails. So if you are in B2B business, uh, this is the data for you. We have a few contact, a handful of contacts from Canada and United States inside our database, but because we have a huge team uh, of people curating those emails and contacts and phone numbers, et cetera. Uh, we can also build custom lists for you. Um, and you can always reach out to sales, to marketing, to our support. Uh, no problems at all. We can verify emails for you. We can uh, create custom lists, et cetera. But the most important thing is that if you have access to this database, you will have um, millions and millions of clean leads inside AutoClose. And we don't rent this database. We don't get this database from anyone. This is built by us, by AutoClose. Okay. So in this case, I want to select United States. Uh, and as I said, I want to go after um, New York State. Um, and what I want to do, I want to do um, uh, sales leaders, sales directors, etc. So for my recipients, for our title, I'll do like sales director, um, sales uh, development director. I could also do sales executive, et cetera, et cetera. So you can add as many titles as you want. Also, uh, there are different, if I type in sales director, you can see that there are multiple options. So you can keep on clicking on those options. And um, in this case, job level, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to tag any of those because I already have the titles. Uh, you can select the gender. In this case, I don't really care. I want both. Um, number of employees. Okay, so this is something interesting. So I would do one to ten, ten to twenty-five, twenty-five to hundred. Um, that would be it, pretty much it. Okay, so still have three thousand here. Uh, revenue doesn't matter much to me at this point. Company names, you can basically uh, filter by, by specific companies. You can go by contacts per company. You can do the SIC codes. As you can see, we're quite detailed here. Um, so whatever you want, this is basically a real um, database of SIC codes. So you can, you can do that. 
Um, and also what I always recommend, and we'll talk a little uh, about that a little bit later. Um, now we have like 3,000, 4,000, whatever matched leads here. Um, and so what I want to do here, I want to say, you know, I want to set this campaign to let's say 100 leads. Why is this important? Because I want to A-B test. I don't want to waste um, and message uh, 3,000, 2,000, 10,000 people with the same message and the same copy. Um, you know, I might get good results, but I might not. So I wasted all those leads. In this case, I'm going to just use 100 leads from this campaign and then 100 leads from, from a second search and third and fourth and fifth and so on. And then A-B test different things. I can start with a subject line. I can, you know, start with a body of an email, et cetera, et cetera. So even in this campaign, I might say 50. Okay. And I'll click add to a campaign. And our system is importing contacts. And we can see now that the system performed the duplication. Okay. And contacts that we, that we successfully imported uh, equal um, 50. So all 50 contacts are deduplicated against my CRM and against my um, auto close. So we can safely import that. But I can say, okay, um, but I think I know Scott. So why is he here? I don't want to, you know, email him. No problems. We can remove him from a campaign and keep on rolling. As you can see here, we have emails, we have phone numbers. From within auto close, you, you still cannot use phone numbers, but all these contacts will sit inside your um, inside your uh, auto close contacts and you can just use those numbers you can import them or export them in this case to your um to your crm and uh, you know reuse them whenever you want okay we have a few questions so i'll stop here for a sec so martin is saying if i want g suite um gmail customers only can i filter that that's a good one we in our database we do not have any uh gmail customers only but you're welcome to upload a csv file um, of your gmails or or private you know what kind of personal emails um and uh and prospect against them so no problem at all um another question martin i'm in b2b sales and i'm looking to target customers okay so it's the same one uh no problems martin as i said uh, uh you can do that but you won't be able to get that from auto close data. However, uh, that would be a special project for our team. So we can talk about that later and we can help you out build that list um, and even talk about certain different strategies that you can, uh, that you can perform to acquire those. Um, in this case, I'm, I'm quite happy with uh, you know, what I have here. So I'm just gonna click next step. And on the third, on the third step, um, we can select a template um, so here, you know, we have a bunch of templates that I used uh, for, for different things. Also, we have some sales templates pre-built by our team, uh, marketing templates, which we continuously upgrade and, you know, update because it's really, really important, you know, what kind of a copy you use to, you know, to, to send and to outreach, to do the outreach. Um, so in this case, um, I want to use one template that I just pre-built. So I'll do this one. Um, next step. See what we get here. Okay, so this is probably not the best email, uh, but it has a, a few good, you know, virtues uh, that you know I'd like to tell you about. So it's quite short. Um, when I sent a test email to myself, um, I looked it looked it up on my phone, and you don't even have to scroll it. You can see it with one instance, with one tap. So that's very important. I mean, you um, you, you just don't want to send long emails. Okay. Um, the other thing that you can see here is a subject line. And what this subject line says, basically I'm using a question to pitch. So here you can see a bit of a personalization. It says first name, okay? So um, Ken, you wanna know what happens after you click send? You know, if you are in sales, if you're a sales leader, like if, if you remember who I filtered to prospect against, you know, this might be, you know, might be quite uh, intriguing to, to, to kind of click and see what, what is this all about. So as, as sales leaders, we all manage teams and we all send emails. Our goal is to engage and close more deals. If I tell you that I can send to you a repeatable process laid out in a PDF that got me into 200 demos in our first month, would you be interested in reading such a document? Let me know, thanks. So it's very clear, you know, um, 
what you need to do here. Even better, um, you know, just say, just write yes, no, even better. Because then it's crystal clear what's the engagement. Okay, so this is what I'm offering you, you know, just say yes, no. Again, this might work, you know, this might not work. It really depends. But also what you can see here, if you've been uh, with us for quite some time, like a few of our clients that I can see here, um, you can see that this is a totally new interface uh, that we have here for you guys. So on the left hand side, we can see some closing tips. Um, here, you know, we're advising you to add a signature, um, to write, you know, fewer words, et cetera, et cetera, to add follow-ups. Um, so this is very new. I'm very excited about this because we just launched it. It's in beta and we're going to continue improving this. Uh, so you can access it when you go to your, um, to your campaign. And on the left-hand side, you can see closing tips, of course, with a K. Um, so here I can preview my email um, um, and see how it's going to look like when I send it. Uh, you can send a test email to yourself again to check, you know, how it looks like on a mobile phone, etc. You can insert tokens. And I've been talking about, as you can see, we have this test field token that I added there. Um, so you can personalize this as much as you want. Um, another thing, you can add as many follow-ups as you want. The reason I won't be sending these emails, uh, th th this actual particular campaign is because I don't have enough follow-ups. So I'm gonna keep on building on those. But I managed to record a video the other day, which I embedded here. So this is another thing. If you add a video to your campaign, you're gonna dramatically improve your click-through rates. Um, that means people clicking on the content inside your email. Um, in this case, we doubled the amount of click-through rates that we were getting, um, and that was stable across the sales team. So our VP of sales, Adrian, uh, CEO Sean, myself and marketing, the whole sales team, uh, we improved at minimum, we 2x our, our um, click-through rates by just adding a video. So this is an important one. Um, another thing um, that I want to emphasize here is um, in all these follow-ups, I figured out that this really works for me and my clients the best is if I send the email as a reply to the previous one. So I will just click on this little box that says, send this email as a reply to the previous one. That means that uh, we're going to create some sort of a threading. Okay. So you send the first email, then the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth follow-up, they all go to the same thread. Um, Again, this might work for you, this, and it might not work for you. So just test it, put it to a good test. Um, so now, basically, I'm, you know, I'm happy with the, with the emails, but again, I wanna add more follow-ups. I didn't have time to do that, so I'll do that after our, our webinar. I'm gonna let you know what's the result. Um, so I'm gonna click here, update the sequence. Um, and basically, you can see the campaign overview here. You can see campaign info, recipients, email sequence, etc. You can edit all those before sending, but even after you click start a campaign uh, or send a campaign, you know, no problems at all. You can come back to it. You can edit it. You can pause it, etc. But as a matter of fact, let's let's do it right now. So my campaign is not ready, but still, I'm going to click start a campaign. Okay, and it's you know, it's about to get going tomorrow. So you can see here in my campaigns that um, I sent this campaign and it's pending status because it's, it's about to go out tomorrow. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna click to sales leaders New York um, and I'm just gonna pause the campaign. As simple as that, as simple as that. Um, here on the right hand side, you can see the stats of that particular campaign. So what you can do here, um, Let's go back to my product hunt ebook contributors. You can actually uh, click on, on, on clicked or opened or whatever uh, metric you want, or you can go through recipients and see uh, who replied, who's active. You can see if they're coming from a CSV file source, which all these are. Um, you can click on a particular person and you can see actual timeline, um, when they clicked on what they clicked, uh, you can see what was the email that was sent. Uh, you can see a reply, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of 
options here. You can also see that this person is pretty engaged. They got 43 points by just clicking on all these things and engaging with my email. So you can always know, oh, these guys really, you know, they're engaged and I should probably reach out to them. Um, how you can figure that out on the macro level is if you go to contacts, or again, how I like to call it, a light CRM inside AutoClose, but don't tell that to anyone. Um, because at the end of the day, we're not a CRM, we're a sales development tool. Um, if you click on contacts, you can see that Jose, Frank, Andrew uh, engaged the most with my emails. And you can see that on the point side to the right, right? So what I wanna do here, I wanna say, okay, just you know, tag all these people. As a matter of fact, I wanna you know, tag all of these guys and, and add them, and ladies, and add them to a campaign. Boom, so you can do it from here. Um, you can create a new campaign or you can add them to an existing campaign. Um, of course, we have a do not email list. So if a contact, um, if, if you get a reply from someone saying, you know, you know, F off, I'm not interested, you know, stop emailing me, et cetera, our machine learning system will recognize that and will, um, will put them to a do not email list. And how does that look like? Uh, basically, you, you, you know, it, this is a complete automation for you guys. You don't even, you, you can forget about that. On the other end, uh, what I like to do, I always say, hey, you know, this is a very personalized email. I don't want to include unsubscribe links. I'm sorry, you know, you can't blame me for, for trying. And, you know, I'd apologize and let them know immediately that they're removed from whatever list and I mark them in my CRM as a, you know, no-go. Um, what's actually happening is they're in our do not email box. So you can see all these people uh, with this little icon, um, they're on my do not email list and they'll never ever be emailed if I don't remove them from this list. Okay. So let's see, we have a few questions. Michael, um, as a sales rep, and I'm following up on things like demos, proposals, CDC, do you suggest we use AutoClose for one of, or stick with AutoClose, use AutoClose more for campaigns? Uh, Michael, that's a, that's a great question. And uh, I'm going to use this space to, to kind of answer because uh, it's part of my tips. So our, our VP of sales, Adrian Chow, um, very, very successful uh, manager and an executive. So what he's doing with AutoClose um, is uh, in our process, we, we, have, we have this tool that we call, uh, that, uh, that we use to send um, proposals, which is called PandaDoc. We, we also use Proposify, et cetera. Um, once we send document, you know, some people are just too busy to go over it. You know, some people really want to read it, you know, in details, et cetera. So what, what he came up with is, is basically to connect the system. And if, if, uh, we don't have a signed document, he's having, um, follow-up sequence, which reminds people, uh, to, to subscribe, you know, like, you know, he's, he's also playing a few, you know, touching a few emotional chords by, you know, saying that, you know, uh, which is kind of true that the proposal is expiring and, you know, some of you might went through that experience, but, you know, it's, it's nothing too salesy or this or that. It's just, you know, how the things are, how the things should be, you know, so you should fight for your deals because it was so hard to get them to that point. So yes, you can use articles for that. I definitely recommend you use articles for that. You know, as a matter of fact, sit down, you know, with yourself for, for a few moments and see what other things you can, you do on a daily basis, you know, in regards to email or prospecting or whatever, write a detailed document and see, you know, what you can really, you know, outsource on one end, on the other end, what you can automate and use AutoClose for that. As you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in marketing, leading a marketing team here at AutoClose. And for me, you know, I don't do a lot of sales prospecting, but I do other stuff and I use AutoClose for that. I use multiple accounts for that uh, from within AutoClose, of course. Um, so that's that. Um, also, we added this new, uh, new uh, filter field where you can actually um, filter by, you know, uh, campaigns by every custom field that you add, et cetera. So that's very, very useful. Um, I'll just go over a few other things, so integrations. Um, here you can see that we have a bunch of Zapier integrations. If you're not familiar with Zapier, um, it's, a, it's a software tool that enables different software products to get connected. So you can create a whole bunch of automations. So uh, do me a favor, if you are not familiar with it, research a little bit about Zapier and figure out what you can do to automate your auto close um, with our products. Just let us know and we'll, we'll create um, 
we'll create our automation for you. Also, we have a Salesforce native integration um, and et cetera. Um, so um, a few, few other things, um, a few other things before we go into uh, Q&A. And I'm sorry that this is taking more than 30 minutes. Um, I'm uh, actually having fun and I'm super passionate about uh, AutoClose. I hope that uh, you're getting some of that energy. Um, keep on asking questions and I'll just add a few tips. As I said, uh, adding a video will increase, will double your click-through rates. So it's a no-brainer. We use, uh, we use Vidyard and it's integrated natively inside your AutoClose and it has a freemium model, which means that uh, you don't have to pay in order to use it. So you can add videos to your emails and that's, that's just amazing. Play around with it. Videos don't have to be professional. You don't wanna think about you know, having a professional video because um, you wanna make it as personal as possible. So you know, scrappy video, second, third try, perfect, upload it, send it. That's, that's all good. Um, A-B test. That's split testing, that's really important. And we don't have a feature inside AutoClose that will enable, enable you to automatically A-B test. But I mean, you know, I like to say to my clients, don't be lazy. Uh, you, can, you can easily uh, test things inside AutoClose. Um, and one of the things that you can test is, is uh, you know, you can test your um, subject lines, you can test, test your signature, you can test your body of an email, Video, no video. Um, basically, it's it's you know the world is your oyster. You can do whatever you want. Just name the campaign differently. You know, say campaign A sales leaders. You know, campaign B sales leaders, and see which one get gets you um, gets you a better uh, open rate, reply rate, click through rate. Uh, three important rules to remember here. Um, what is that one thing that I'm testing? So don't add too many things. For a reason, we call it A-B test. So uh, you pick up a subject line and then in another email, just write a different subject line and see which one converts better. But then also mind you, make sure that you're sending it to a very similar audience, to the same niche. Um, the other thing, you know, do I have enough data to know if the results are meaning meaningful? Uh, so you wanna test, as I said, like 50 emails in an A version, 50 emails in a B version, et cetera. Um, and the measure of success, basically we have three things. Uh, we have open rates, reply rates, and click-through rates. Some uh, emails might not get you a good open rate, but those who open, they will reply. You know, so you might wanna work on open rates, but the reply rate is good. So that means that the body is pretty good. You know, your call to action is pretty good. Um, the other thing that I wanna mention, uh, don't expect that, you know, auto close is some you know magic wand and it's going to bring you millions and millions you know of demos and, and dollars and whatnot uh the, the important thing here to to uh, have in mind is that auto close is an important tool in your toolkit as a sales leader as a salesperson so you want to be really you know strong on linkedin you want to be really strong on twitter on quora um, you want to engage if, if you're, you know, you're a sales uh, leader and you lead a team of five, 10 people or two people, it doesn't really matter. Everyone should be on LinkedIn. As a matter of fact, look what my sales navigator is doing right now while I'm talking to you. My sales navigator is actually inviting all these people to, um, to connect with me. And again, guess what? I'm not going to spam those people. You know, uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to send an immediate follow up as soon as they accept my, my invitation because it, the timing is not right. I mean, you know, it might be, but it might not be. You don't wanna spam them because they keep on getting different emails. As soon as you accept someone else's invitation, immediately you get like 10 different sequences. So what you wanna do, you wanna keep on nurturing them with the good content, with the valuable stuff. Uh, if you're in sales, you wanna build a network of sales professionals. You know, you wanna, you know, send relevant content and relevant stuff and, uh, and then what you want to do, you might want to export those emails and add them to an auto close campaign because now they're already familiar with you. You know, they, you know, they know you from somewhere. So now you, what you want to do, you want to send emails to those uh, um, sales leaders. But then the other thing that you want to do, you might want to then export that from auto close and add to um, 
ad role and retarget them with some you know, good eBooks, good content that you provide or whatever your product uh, or, or marketing, marketing content can be. You know, so be creative about it. Uh, what I also do, I export my contacts, I upload them to LinkedIn and I, I connect with people that are in my database. So continuous and continuous efforts. Uh, and AutoClose is a necessity or any tool similar to AutoClose is a necessity. You don't wanna be spending time on data you don't want to be spending time on, on you know, sending uh, uh, manual emails in bulk. So that's basically my message to you today. Um, and what is a good bounce rate to not have issues? Michael, very good question. Um, that really depends, that really depends on, on, on Google and, and your reputation. So I would say that, um, um, it's a very good question and I don't want to be too general. Um, I would say if you have 10 to 20% bounce rate uh, on average, so it will depend from a campaign to campaign, but on average, if you have 10 to 20, that, that you should be fine. Um, uh, also um, in a few, I would say in the next quarter, um, we're going to launch a new feature where all the bounces will be pre-checked once you scheduled your once you have scheduled your campaign so we'll remove them um, before they go out so in in the case of auto close it'll be zero um, in the next three months but please um, keep me accountable for that then please email me about that um, if you need a specific date uh, and I'll talk to my tech team this is this is something that's coming up uh, because it's a very good question, and this is something that we were, you know, thinking of. Um, Ken, uh, what video tool integrates with AutoClose? Um, it's called Vidyard. So let me just write it down here. Vidyard tool that's that has a native integration. AutoClose. Okay, so it's called Vidyard. Um, that's a, that's a tool that we use. Um, there are also um, a bunch of other tools, but you know, um, at this point, we just we 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 have this integration with Vidyard, and for whatever reason, I didn't show you how it looks like because it's really cool. Um, let me just say, test, next step. Um, I'll skip the recipients. Blank template. Um, so you can find it here, this little add a video box. Um, and basically uh, you can see some of my videos um, and I can start a new video here. Um, I can record right now, screen record, upload a video or whatever. So I'm just gonna do a camera recording. I'm just gonna wave to you guys. Hello there, hi from Toronto. Um, so that's it basically, it's very, very easy. <laughs> hi Steve. Um, very, very easy to embed and to add to your articles, but also you can use it later on as a, as a Google Chrome plugin or whatever. If you have a support question, if you want to, you know, communicate something to your teammate and they're not around, you can just send them a video message way, way better. Can you integrate with Dub, uh, which is Vidyard's competitor? If not, any plans? Um, not sure that we have any plans, but if you have any connections or contacts there, uh, you might, you know, make an introduction, and if it's, uh, you know, handful out of hours, you know, or just just a few hours for for our tech teams to uh, hack that, um, why not? So, so Stevie, uh, please, um, please uh, make that intro if you have a contact there. Um, one other tip, as I as I said, uh, try and automate as much as you can, but also keep that, you know, scrappy kind of personalized feel. Uh, you know, people are tired with, uh, you know, uh, HTML email, tired of HTML emails and, you know, photos and this and that and a lot of noise. So keep it simple. Um, a few sentences, simple call to action. Do not try to oversell everything, you know, to, to ask for, you know, all possible thing in the world. It, it makes sense on one end, you know, you just want to be straight. You want to tell them everything. If they're interested, they're interested. If not, not. But that's, that's not how it works. Um, you know, we are all first and foremost emotional beings and if you if you try to be too rational you're going to shoo us away because we, all of a sudden we're going to start thinking and start asking ourselves questions and, and avoid to reply you know so 
you don't want that. You want to engage people. Even if it's a negative engagement, it's an engagement. You know, people spend some time on you. So which is, which is kind of cool. Um, Martin, send a campaign out yesterday. Would there be anybody that can check and make sure I did everything correctly and the email sent out? Thanks. For sure. Um, again, uh, you're actually guiding this presentation, which is awesome. Um, because I forget it. On the bottom right, you can see a um, you can see this chat little chat box, um, and you can see people who are available at the moment. So you have Nemanja, you have Vladen, you have Yelena, you have Jeffrey, Milos, etc. You, you you know sometimes I go into support and answer questions and, and all that. Um, normally we don't do that, Martin, because you know we have now over four thousand clients, uh, but. Uh, we do these webinars and, you know, uh, you can actually reach out to our support and they'll be able to help you. Not maybe on a one-on-one -on -one call, but, you know, in a reasonable time, you're going to get, uh, you're going to get a few tips uh, back. So, uh, but yeah, that might be something that we, we also embed and add into our, um, into our uh, daily kind of practice, you know, to have a few hours for you guys to check your content and see, you know, what kind of you, what could you do better, et cetera, like coaching calls or something. So we definitely, we, we have that in mind as well. Um, any other questions? If you have any other questions, suggestions, um, if you know someone who'd be, you know, um, would be willing to do like a co-webinar or, or, you know, anything like that, um, you know, just feel free to make a connection. Um, okay, yeah, there, there is, I'm recording everything, so I'm going to share that uh, with you, no problems. Uh, this is my email, close.com. You can shoot me an email at any point in time. Um, and this is my, just give me a second. Oh, come on. So I'm looking for my, for my LinkedIn profile. I don't know why do I have it here. Um, but I'm going to share that and let's connect. Let's keep in touch. Um, if you have some good case practices, you know, or, or, or some good stuff that, that you, uh, would want to share with us or some success with auto close, you know, um, don't be uh, strangers. Feel free to share with us, and you know I'd, I'd love to promote you and and uh, you know share this with uh, with our audience. But also, if you have any issues, problems, we want you to be successful at the end of the day. So if you have any issues, problems, you know something could be better. Feel free to write to our support. Um, if you know our support works 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, on one end, on the other end, you know, if you write after 5 p.m., you'll see, oftentimes you'll see our executive team jumping in and, and, and replying back, so no issues at all. Um, who do I contact for a custom database of contacts? Very good one. Please write an email to hello at autoclose.com uh, and, and, you know, someone will jump in and, and talk to you about that. But also, um, if you want, you can always book a demo with us. Um, let me just do this Calendly. That's the easiest one. Okay. So let's do this. If you want to book an additional demo or consultation or something like just, just go here and uh, you can book it. Um, okay, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Stevie, for, for saying you rock. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, and, you know, I just hope probably we're going to put these, you know, webinars like to every other week for, especially for our customers. And, you know, so, so that we have some time to, to create a custom contact content for, for every week so that you get some value. So we, we don't go over the, the platform all the time, but that's still in the making. Um, we are growing every day, which is good for you guys as well, because uh, we're going to keep on adding new features and, and hire more people to, to serve you better. Um, and yeah, thank you for, for attending today. It wasn't like 30 minutes, but I hope you got some value out of this. Um, thank you so much.